we're going to be looking at the third and final question of the Eastern Cape Matric Grade 12 paper for September trial exams um, 2013 and this is for IT paper 1, the practical paper. So let's get into it. If you remember question 1 deals with SQL and Delphi coding in SQL and then question 2 dealt with an object orientated question where you create an object and then use the object. Question 3 tends to be a general programming problem whether it's using arrays or text files or combination of both. So let's have a look at this question. There's some sort of lucky draw and there are 23 children and then I see the dreaded string component. The moment I see or read about a string component I think there's going to be something to do with 2D arrays and if I read further down there it is two-dimensional arrays but Although it is quite um, intimidating and can be quite scary, let's try to do what we can. Let's make sure we get as many marks as we can. And hopefully in between all, all, all the code and getting the marks that we can, we can get something to work. So let's have a look at the first question. So basically this is a lucky prize type of program. There's a text file that has these ticket numbers. And we must write the code that gets the ticket numbers from this text file and stores them in a two-dimensional array called R tickets. Now, there are 23 children that are their names are already stored in an R names um, array. So let's have a look at what we can do with our question. So there's our display. We're going to be displaying all the information in this or a string grid. So let's do what we can first. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to declare my 2D array. I don't think they've declared one for us, no. Fortunately, not they have not. They've declared a constant there. I'm going to declare an array over here. So, and they say we must call it R2, if I remember correctly. Let's have a look at what they called it. AR2 tickets. So let's call our one AR2 tickets. Now, as you can see, this is an array. Now, it's a 2D array. So there'll be one to a particular number, comma, one to another particular number. And they will be uh, some sort of number, and they're all of top integer. They're all ticket numbers, so you only have half a ticket number. So what are these numbers that we're going to use here? Well, we know that there are 23 people in, that the, the 23 names in this R names. So I'm assuming there will be 23 people that we get in from. And when I looked at the text file, it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So there are about 10 spaces for them to get ticket numbers. Not all of them are filled all the way through but maybe there will be. So let's just say it's from 1 to 23 and from 1 to 10 is going to be my array. Okay, so there we go. We've got that. Now let's go look at on this button for the get info. We have to write the code that is going to take the values from a text file um, and then displays them or gets them and puts them in the array. I think the display will happen later on. So let's do it. Okay, so I know this is quite daunting at first, so let's just tackle it bit by bit. We know how to get data from a text file. We know that there's going to be a, some sort of string variable that we extract data from, and then we're going to have some sort of text file uh, variable that we assign to. Now, I'm just going to do pretty much the same thing we do all the time. We first check if the file exists. So I do a little check if the file exists. And the file that exists, the file that we're looking for, they said was tickets.txt. So let's go tickets.txt. If that is equal to false, that means that file does not exist, then I must do some sort of error message or something. So we can say then begin. We can do two things. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show a message, say, hey, where's that file? Or well, in this case, no file was found. Nice and short and sweet. And then also to avoid any c clash with other code, I'm actually going to terminate the program right here. So I'll just exit the program so it closes straight away so it doesn't do anything else. If the file does exist, remember that we've got to do the steps. The first step was assign the file. Here's where we assign a variable or text file, like we've got a text file variable f. We assign f to that file called tickets. Txt. And so this is a way that we can just refer to f now instead of having to always refer to tickets.txt. So we assign the file. We want to start from the very beginning. So we reset the file. And then we go while not end of file f do. And we're going to do more than one thing. So that's why it's a good idea to have my begin and an end. 
Also, try add comments to your code. It does make it easier for you to check things um, later on, and especially with begins and ends. So end of while loop, just so I know where that ends. And inside this while loop, we will obviously be reading the value from the text file first, sorry, into a variable, a string variable, which we'll call sline, which we've already declared. And then we'll just manipulate sline. And then last but not least, we must close the file. F. So just by doing that, just by actually not even understanding the question, but knowing how to do text file handling, we can probably accumulate some marks here already. Okay, so let's go look at this text file first of all. I think this is going to be quite a lengthy question. So let's have a look at this text file. There we go. So there's the data. So as you can see, um, not everyone has the same number of elements in each row. So this is for the first person. There's one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, see, they're, they're different numbers. So that becomes quite tricky. So I'm just going to copy this so, so we can get used to what the data is going to look like. And I'm going to just make a comment here just so I can see what the data looked like, what, the, what it looks like so I can extract it. Okay. Now the key thing here is we need to, each line represents a line in the string grid. So I need to keep track of not only which line we're working with, but I need to keep track of which column we're working with. And so when we deal with the first line, so I need some sort of counters that are going to, so I know where to put what. So when I'm dealing with the first line from the text file, I'm only dealing with this line. When I move on to the next line, then I must do deal with the next line. So let's make um, a row variable and a column variable. Let's call it, I don't know if Delphi's going to have a problem with that. Let's call it R row and R column. And they are also of type integer. Okay. So when we first start this program, when we first do the loop, we should probably set the row counter over here. Do you see this row? Row 1, row 2. We will set row to row 0, which is not row, actually. It's our row. So there we go. Our row is a 0. So that's the row we're dealing with. And we're going to do all this code for our row. And then once we get to the end of this code, we must make sure that we go to the next row. So once we've done one line of code here, I must actually increase our row so that it will go to this row when it goes through the text file again when it gets the next value or next line from the text file so we got our row okay so we've got this value here. now I've got this R col which will be the column which will deal with column one now it's not column zero because the names are probably going to go there so I'm going to start with column one so I'm going to start off with it being R col equals to a 1. Now I'm not going to put R col equal to 1 over here because I'm going to make R col equal to 1 every time I start a new row, which just means I'm doing it inside the loop. So I'm actually going to say, you know, R col is equal to 1 from the start here. So we start with R col equal to 1. And now let's extract these values. Now, we don't know how many of these values they're going to be. There could be 10, there could be 3, there could be 9. We don't know. But I know that there's commas that separate them. So I'm actually going to repeat doing this until, so I'm going to use a repeat. Because this is a looping pre, uh, procedure or looping process where we don't know how many times we're going to do the loop because it could be different for each line. So I'm going to repeat doing this until the position of the comma in S line. Remember, S line is going to look like this until the position of this line is equal to zero, which means there's no more commas in it. The moment there's no more commas in there, then I can stop doing the loop. So that's basically what I'm going to do. I'm going to carry on finding the position of the comma. So I'm actually going to make a variable called comma, which will tell me the position of the comma. And then I'm actually going to call a variable called value, which will be the value that you get there. So let's start. The first thing I'm going to do is find the position of the comma. So we find comma is equal to pos of the comma in S line. Remember, it's what you're looking for inside the thing that you're looking at. Okay, so they find the position of the comma. In this case, it'll be a 2. Position 2 will be the comma. Then I want to copy. I'm going to have to say value is equal. We're going to copy from S line starting at position 1 until the position of the comma minus 1. In this case, it'll be 
2 minus 1, so it'll be 1 value. But remember, copy returns a string, and this is a integer. So it's probably a good idea to do a string to int conversion. So it'll convert that number to that. And then I delete from S line from 1 till the position of the comma. So once I'm finished going the value, it will delete that. So that's what we'll be left with. And it'll continue getting the value, find the position of the comma, until it gets to the end, until all that's left is that 200. Now that's very important. I must, I'll come back to that later. But what must I do with this value? Well, I need to actually insert it into the, um, the array. So my R2 tickets. Okay, now here's the, now the first value is which person are we dealing with and that means which row are we dealing with and we know the row is dictated by our row so in our row and the second value is from 1 to 10 so it's any one of these values so it's actually the column value so it'll be our col so in position our row which will be zero position zero the first time and in position one the first time in that position we must put the first value that will now equal value the value that I extracted from the first part of the thing then once it's done it'll go hey is there still a comma in S line yes there is so it'll do it all again and it'll do the same for the five this time call needs oh, call will not have increased we actually need to increase call somewhere so once we've inserted column our call into our call we've inserted it there into that column we actually say okay the next time we insert something we must actually go to the next column so our call must increase our call so that it becomes number two so the next time we insert something we insert in position two and then in position three and so on and so on okay if you're not too sure just believe I'm sure it'll work hopefully it'll work okay so that's what's happening there so it should be putting the values in but as I said earlier when it does the final one it deletes it finds the position of the comma and it deletes it we're going to be left with 200 in S line and then the position of the comma will be zero. So this loop will finish. But it will forget to actually, we still got that 200 left, which we still need to put in. And I think that's what they forgot to the department, because as you can see, they forgot the 200 there. And you'll see in the text file, all the last numbers are not included. I think they forgot about them. But it's fine, we will not forget about them. We will remember them. And the way we remember them is after the loop, we know that S line is all that's left. So I'm gonna say, you know what? Val oh, R tickets, R2 tickets, all right. R2 tickets in position I row, at position I call. And the reason why I can do this is because even on the last turn, I call will be increased to the last value. That is equal to whatever's left over in S line. But remember, S line is still a string, and R, or R tickets is a whole bunch of integers. So we must convert from a string to an int. And I'm really holding thumbs that this works. And we actually can't, the, the sucky thing is we can't actually test it. We can see that it runs with regard to syntax. But to see that it works properly, we won't know until we actually display it, which I think is the next question. So we increase row 2, which means we now go to the next student. And then it will jump up here, read that line from that student, and then do the same thing. Start with our call equals 1 and go through each and every one individually. Okay. I think that looks like I think that it's everything that we need to do for this one. I'm gonna hold thumbs that it all works, and um, let's first run it and see if there's no syntax errors. There's a syntax error. Obviously, there's a semicolon missing. I was just testing to see if you are awake. While not, if a file. Oh, I don't know why you guys didn't speak up earlier because that should be of end of file. And there we go, it works. So it gets the info and no error messages pop up. And so that's a very good sign. Doesn't say that I, I try to access anything that I shouldn't have. So there we go. So it seems to be working. In the next part of this video, we will look at the um, other questions. Be sure to check out our YouTube channel for all other videos for this question and more. Um, subscribe to the channel, join us on Twitter and find out and see if this channel can help you pass RT.